guess what? It's me, boys and girls, Mr. Sunito. And we have a math lesson for today, but it's going to be very different than what we've done before. Um, you are definitely going to need your Chapter 9 math book. And for today's lesson, you're going to need... Are you ready? A pair of scissors. Okay. If you don't have a pair of scissors, ask mom or dad or someone at home if they can help you find a pair of scissors. Okay. It's going to be really, really helpful if you've got them. So see what you can do. I'm going to switch over to the other camera and I'm going to walk you through this. Again, this is very different. So you might want to ask mom or dad to sit with you and watch the video. Okay, are you ready? Ooh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, I'll see you in a moment. All right, boys and girls, I'm on page 526 in the math book. You do not have to tear the page out of the book, but you can if you want. Let mom or dad know and they can help you tear it out. But I just tore it out so it would be easier for you to see. And what we're going to do before we start with the lesson, we have to get ready for the lesson. And you're just going to do this. You're just going to put a box kind of around these two squares. And you may be saying to yourself, well, why do I have to do that, Mr. Sunito? That sounds silly. No, because what you're, get, you're gonna do is you're gonna very carefully take your scissors and you're just gonna cut this out. Don't destroy this page. You're going to need this page. So don't start cutting. No, 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 no. We're just going to very carefully cut here. So you can turn your book sideways like this. And again, if you need help, be sure to ask for help from someone at home. And you're just going to make some small cuts slowly. I cut slowly so I don't make any mistakes. Okay. I'm going to cut here. Now don't cut the orange marker up here. We're going to need that. And then I'm going to go and cut it like that. And you should have two squares. Now, we're not done. We need these two squares. We're going to use them. So we're going to move our math book or the math page. And now we're going to take our scissors and cut even more carefully on the edges of the green square. We're just going to cut the green square out. And we want it to be, you know, I always say it doesn't have to be perfect, but we do want it to be close. So just do your best. Cut that green square. And you know what? While I'm at it, I'm going to cut that blue square. Why not? Okay. I'm just going very slowly, and that's the key to cutting things, is don't rush it. Take your time. Ask for help. And then you can separate the green and the blue square like this. So now you should have two squares that look like that. Pause the video, take your time, cut your squares. And then when you're ready, start the video back up again. All right, now that you've got your two squares cut out, I think it's time for a brain pop break. We're gonna watch a short video that's going to help us with the math lesson. So sit back, relax, watch the video, and I'll be back in a few minutes, okay? 
hang on. One, two, three, four, five. I'm measuring where we need to stand for the beanbag toss. I don't have a ruler or tape measure, so I'm measuring in a different way. How can you measure without a ruler? You can use objects around you to measure things. Yep, you can use crayons to measure. Line up crayons along the object you want to measure. Make sure the crayons are straight and the same size. There shouldn't be gaps between them and they shouldn't overlap. The end of the crayon should line up with the end of the object. This book is four crayons long. If you don't line up the crayons correctly, your measurement won't be accurate or correct. It's important to use the same object when you measure. If you use different objects, you won't get an accurate measurement. Cool robots, Moby. How tall are they? We can use blocks to measure their height. The green robot is four blocks tall. How tall is the red robot? Let's see. It's ten blocks tall. You're right, Moby. It seems like the red robot is taller because the number is bigger. But I know the green robot is taller. Since the blocks we use to measure are different sizes, it's hard to compare the measurements. When you compare measurements, always use the same object to measure. The green robot is four blocks tall, and the red robot is three blocks tall. How does using smaller or larger objects change your measurement? When you measure using objects, Think about the size of the object you want to use. Let's measure this paint kit using paper clips. Let's see. It's six paper clips long. Now let's try measuring with something bigger, like erasers. The paint kit is three erasers long. We used more paper clips than erasers to measure the paint kit. When you measure using smaller objects, you use more of them. When you measure with larger objects, you use fewer. What should we use to measure this bookshelf? Pencil sharpeners are pretty small. It'd take a long time to measure this bookshelf. Do you want to use an electric guitar? <laughs> The guitar is longer than the bookshelf. It's easier to use something smaller than the object you're measuring. That's better, Moby. The bookshelf is four pencils wide. A unit is what you use to measure. So the unit we're using to measure is pencils. What are some examples of units? We measure length in units like centimeters or meters. We also measure in units like inches or feet. Standard units are common units that people use so they can describe measurements in the same way. If we didn't measure things in the same way, then we wouldn't understand each other. Building things would be really hard if we didn't use common units. But sometimes you don't have a ruler around, so you can use non-standard units. I need to measure about 10 feet away from the board for the beanbag toss. So I'm walking 10 steps. It looks like we need to stand here for the beanbag toss. You can go first, Moby. Moby, that's not fair. And I'm back. I hope you liked the video.
And what we're going to work on today is measuring. And we are going to practice measuring things with squares. Now, this is going to be a little tricky because we only have two squares here, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how to do it. And in the book, they give you this picture of a marker. And we're going to measure how many squares it takes to make the length of the marker or how long it is. And if you look very carefully, there's the word length. Can you say length? And that just means how many squares does it take to make the marker? Now watch how I do this and then you can pause the video and do it. I have to take, just like you saw in the cartoon, I'm gonna put the first square right at the line. I have to measure it very, I have to line it up real carefully. It's tricky work. And then I'm gonna take the second one and put it right next to the green one. Okay, I go slow. I'm gonna put my finger on the blue square. Now watch this, I count. One, two, but I'm not done because I have to get all the way over here, so watch. Three, see how I did that? Very slowly and carefully. Then I go four, and then I go one more. Look at that. How many squares did it take? It took five squares, and we say about five squares. Now, if you want, I'm going to give you another little trick. If you want to do it like this, when you're measuring, to help you count, here's, this is what I do sometimes. I'll take um, a pencil or a marker. I'm going to do a marker so you can see. And I draw, I kind of draw the square, which is fun. And then I put my square right next to it. And I draw in my next square. So watch, there's another one. I draw in another square. La 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 la. La 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 la. It doesn't have to be perfect. Here we go. But I should try and make sure that the square lines up with the line. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I want to be neat. Okay. And you'll notice I'm a little bit off here. Okay. So we could say one, two, three, four, maybe four squares or five squares. So here, I would even, you could even say four or five squares. It's probably because I'm just a little bit off, but that's okay. You can do it both ways. Now, you pause the video, you try it, see how many squares you get, and then come on back. Now, I hope that worked well. If you look at the bottom of page 526, what they want you to do are to find some things at home that you can measure. But you might not have these things. That's okay. You probably have a crayon at home. So let's pull out let me see where my crayons are. I know I've got them here. Aha, here's a crayon. Now here's a crayon box. And it says, use one crayon. So I take the crayon out and I'm not gonna draw. I'm just gonna do the first way. I'm gonna just count the squares. One, I gotta line them up very carefully. Two, 
three and I have a little bit left over, but it's not enough to make a whole square. So I don't know. We could say three, we could say three and a half, but I haven't really taught fractions yet. But you go ahead, see if you can, you can pause the video, see if you can find a crayon at home. I did send crayons home with, with the homework packets. See if you can find a crayon and measure it and then come on back. Okay. So on page 526, I'm going to write down, it says about, I'm going to write about three squares. That's what I'm going to use. But here, look at this. For problem two, it says measure a stapler. I don't think I have a stapler at home. So if you have a stapler, go ahead and do it. And if you don't have a stapler, ooh, this is the fun part. This is what you get to do. Let's say you can't find a stapler at home or a crayon. I want you to cross it out with your pencil. And then I want you to find something else that you would like to measure. Now, it doesn't, it shouldn't be too big. Don't go measure a bicycle because that's going to take forever. But let me see. Oh, you know what I have that I could measure? I have a spoon. I bet you've got a spoon at home. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write whatever it is I'm going to measure here. Instead of the stapler, I'm going to write spoon, spa, 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 S, P. Now the ooh, ooh sound is tricky. It's O, O, N. But if you don't want to measure the spoon and you want to measure your finger, then write finger. It's completely up to you, but I'm going to use a spoon. So here's my spoon, and here's how I'm going to measure my spoon. Now, your spoon's probably going to be different size than mine. I'm going to start at the bottom. There's my square, okay? And I have to make sure I can't start down here. There's no spoon there. I can't start up here because I'm missing all this. So I have to start here. One, two, three, four. You have to be straight. Five. I'd say six. But your spoon's probably going to be different. You might have a giant spoon. Okay, so there's six. Oh, do you want to see my giant spoon? Hang on. Let me go find my giant spoon. Okay, I found my giant spoon. Now look at this. It can't even fit under the camera. Hold on, let me move this up. Are they the same length? No. Are they going to have the same number of squares? No. So it's okay. You pick whatever it is that you want to measure. But we've got a crayon, a stapler. If you have a paintbrush at home, you can measure a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush, find something else to measure. Um, you could. Let me see what I found here in my house. Let's see. Um, hmm. Oh. You can measure a roll of tape if you have that at home. Let's see. What else do I have on my desk? Oh. Maybe you have some post-it notes that you want to measure. That would be good. Um... Now, it says scissors. I hope everybody's got scissors at home. I've got my scissors. Okay, so I'm going to measure those with squares. Um, what else could you measure at home? Let me think. Oh, you could measure a shoe. It's pretty big, but I think everybody's got at least one shoe at home. I hope you got two. 
Um, Everybody's got a finger. You could measure a finger. So you decide what you're going to measure. But I want you to try, uh, definitely try the problems on this page, 526. And then look at this. I want you to try page 527. And again, it's okay. I don't have um, a big thing of glue like that. But maybe you have a glue stick. Try that. You may not have paints at home. Then cross it out and pick something else. Okay? I bet you have a pencil. That should be easy. Uh, you probably have a homework folder at home that you could measure. So see what you can do. And then look at the math on the spot video. I'm going to read this to you. It says the green yarn is about two squares long. Let's see if that's right. Yeah. Then it says, about how long is the blue yarn? Oh. Well, I'm not going to tell you, but I will put the link up for the math on the spot video so you can watch that. So I hope you have a lot of fun with measuring today. I know it's kind of a different math lesson. Oh. I forgot to tell you one more thing. This is really, really important. Um, your little squares, I want you to save them because we will use them again in another lesson at the end of chapter nine. So if you have a little plastic bag at home, you can just pop them right in there, boop, and save them. If you don't have a plastic bag, that's okay. But put the squares, or they're sometimes called tiles, put them in a spot um, that's safe so you can get them as we finish up Chapter 9. It won't be for a few days. In fact, it'll probably be at least a week before we need them again. But um, if you have a little plastic bag at home, this will be helpful because we're going to have some other materials that we're going to cut out and pop into here. Okay? All right. Be sure to take pictures of your work and send it to me in Class Dojo. Have a great day, boys and girls.